This is the OG video, like uninterrupted by fake ass BBC. It's the concern about the influence you have being a harmful influence, but let's start with the allegations. Not necessarily a harmful influence. The fact that I have, I'm massively influential over the youth, and I understand that. But it's my influence as a whole which people are afraid of, not necessarily the things I say. Let's start with the allegations. Have you raped anybody? Absolutely not. Have you trafficked anybody? Absolutely not. Exploited any women? For Absolutely money? not. But you have admitted using emotional manipulation to get women to work in the webcam industry for you. No. Firstly, let's, let's begin. At the, let's start at the beginning. I'm facing charges. The one, the first one you mentioned, the rape one, has already been thrown out by a judge because there's no evidence of it. Secondly, it's very difficult for me to sit here and have a very frank and honest conversation with you while we're in the territory of Romania about a legal case that's going on within Romania. I have to protect myself. I've agreed to do an interview with you, and I want to be as honest with you as possible. But I can't incriminate myself in any way, and I have to be very careful with what I talk about. There are no charges yet. Correct. There a are no charges. Has said that there are no charges, and I've, and I've agreed to speak to you. But I have to be as honest and frank as I can while also protecting myself and following my legal counsel. So let's talk about what you've said yourself then. You have said on the website for your original website for the Hustlers University that you emotionally manipulated women to fall in love with you so that you could get them working in the sex industry for your financial gain. As I said, I have to be very careful with what I say, but let's put it this way. No women are coming out against me and accusing me of doing it. Yes, they are. No, they're not. Yes, they are. No, they're not. Who? There's testimony from the current investigation. The current investigation, which I cannot discuss, which I know intimately and you don't, I can tell you right now that the, late, the women who are in this case file, there are two American women who have been caught already admitting they're lying, and then nobody else is accusing me of anything. To begin with, it's very common in cases like this that the alleged victims do not always see themselves as victims. Well, that's very interesting. It's actually extremely interesting because if I was a matrix-controlled organization, Oh my god. Okay, you know what's really funny about this? The unabridged, unedited... This unedited video makes him look worse. I think people literally just want him to, like, come across cool. So the fact that this was, like... The fact that he, like, filmed himself... The fact that this footage exists is enough for people to say, Oh, he's so brilliant. This was 5D chess. Because, like... This video quite literally makes him look worse. He, it makes him look like an even bigger baby. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah, no, for sure. He's, he's like white knuckling through this while he's doing like the fucking Illuminati symbol with his hands or whatever. But honestly, it's kind of like when uh, Trump mania was at its peak. And, like, women would talk about how, like, they think Trump is hot. And basically, I, uh, you know, I, I, I said, like, look, you can like Trump's policies or whatever. You can think he's charismatic or whatever. But the moment that you think, like, he's objectively, like, a physically attractive person means that you are in a position where it's, like, you know, unmanageable. It's, like, you can't salvage that. You can't solve that. You're too far gone, Right. It's kind of like that. The Andrew Tate fan base is now at a point where they like, they probably look at the top of his head and go, look at his full head of hair. You know what I mean? Like they have, they're not reacting to like what they are seeing. They're not reacting to the visual stimuli. They're reacting in the way that Andrew expects them to react. So like, they don't actually quite understand what he is doing in this interview. They don't really, they don't really see this as like um, uh, an interview. Like they're not really analyzing his reactions. They're not looking at it as though if he's like hysterical or not. They've already, they've already moved beyond that point. And they don't really have any way of uh, truly assessing this interview for what it is, which is a disaster for the record. They're just basically happy that it even exists. You do politics and I think you're hot though. Thanks poop ass butt. Reminds me of a certain streamer's fans. Plenty of streamers and uh, their fans behave like this, though. It's just like... It, it is what it is. It's just like a, a, a part of the, um, the parasocial nature of like experiencing content online. 
organization, and my goal was to slander somebody and try and destroy their name, you're telling me that they've chosen a crime which, one, is heinous, of course, because it damages the person's credibility, and two, you're saying that even if everyone else involved, if you have five people and everyone's sitting there saying, no, nobody's hurt anybody, we like Andrew, we've all worked together, or we're friends, etc. That's not what everybody's saying. Um, no. let, let me read you some of the testimony from the current investigation. Can I finish? My, of, can I finish this? One of the witnesses can, said... Can I finish this? You're not answering can the question. Except your fans shit on you even if you pronounce a word wrong. Yeah, I have a, I, I still have like a lot of stands as well, but I think the, the relationship that I have with my community is a little bit different than the way that like a lot of these fucking dick writers operate. Even though if you ask other communities, they'll say, oh, Hassan's stands are fucking crazy. They're insane. It's like, no, not really. Like, um, you just have been conditioned into thinking that like uh, the attacks on me are justifiable because I like bought a house or something and it's some it's somehow antithetical to my worldview. You know what I mean? Whereas with Andrew Tate, there's like very valid criticisms to be made here, and yet his fan base is like routinely deflecting away from that. I've asked you. You're not answering the question. I've I am asked answering you. the question. You're Let saying me read you the you're, you're saying one of the you're saying the people who are involved in this even if they say they're not victims that they're still going to try and attack me and pretend they are they're victims. Treated as victims by the case that's ongoing. Let, and not all of them are saying that. One of the witnesses says, Lucy, you, we, we, can't can't that. we can't just, we, we, we can't, can't go into that. the case. The case is open and active. Well, let's just be clear that not all of the witnesses in the case are behaving in the way you describe. And even those that are, it doesn't bar them from being treated as victims by the prosecution by the case. We have an open criminal investigation. I am absolutely not really sure I'll be found innocent. I know the case better than you. I know it intimately and you don't. I have seen all the criminal files and the evidence against me and you haven't. I know the truth of what happened and you don't. And I'm telling you absolutely not really, I've never hurt anybody, that the case that's been put against me is completely and utterly fabricated and I'm never gonna be found guilty of anything. And it's very difficult for me to answer your in-depth questions because we're sitting here inside of the territory of Romania, I am beholden to the Romanian legal system and I'm not gonna incriminate myself because you're trying to prod me. You are wrong. And we're going to have to accept that for now and ask and, and talk about something else. Let me read you then what you have said about sure. what you have done. Sure. You have said, my job was to meet a girl, go on a few dates, sleep with her, get her to fall in love with me to the point where she'd do anything I say and then get her on webcam so we, we could become rich together. I don't think that's what I personally said. I think that's, that's exactly what no, you said. That's, you that's a, that's, no, I've never said that. That's something that you found on the internet. Doesn't mean I've said it. And, and, and again, once again, if any female on the planet has a problem with me, I strongly recommend her to go to the police and try and pursue me for criminal charges. It's actually very interesting that me, one of the most famous people in the world, who's been vilified by the legacy media and placed it all over the internet, while everyone has attacked me from every single angle, while federal agencies from multiple countries have called over 2,000 women who know me, we stand here with zero new accusations since my arrest. Zero. If you took any famous person, any... I love that. Oh, shit. I didn't realize this part was cut out from the original where he says, oh, well, these women have um, accused me, but how about all these other women who haven't accused me? Like, we called random women on the street uh, or even women that I did not do anything to, and they said I didn't do anything to them. Oh, got it. Okay. Checkmate, libtard. <laughs> it's the classic... It's the classic uh, defense that I, I bring up regularly. Your Honor, you say that I've done a murder, but think about all the days in my 32 years of existence where I haven't done a murder. I rest my case. Any man of substantial wealth, and you called 2,000 women who knew him, he'd find an ex-girlfriend is upset, somebody who wants money who's upset. They called 2,000 people who knew me and could not find a single woman to make a new complaint. The, the, only, com the only complaints they have against me are the initial complaints, which we can prove are lies, and that's where it stands. So it's I like, <laughs> Your Honor. <laughs> there are billions of people on the planet, and I haven't, I haven't sexually uh, trafficked. I, I haven't sex trafficked them, so uh, you know, I think it's it's pretty obvious that I am. Uh, I am uh, clearly innocent here. I'm, I'm not going to sit here and allow you to pretend that I'm some kind of evil predator. When actually, I'd argue the fact. I'd argue the fact that people who've been investigated to the level I've been investigated to. If you're taking the this is literally.
This is Donald Trump. This is straight up Donald Trump. Average man on the street and investigate his entire life for 14 months, call everyone who's ever known him and vilify him in the media and encourage people to come forward for money and to try to contact every ex-girlfriend he's ever had. You would, would come forward and accuse those people of rape and accuse those I people I think that you would have a lot more, I think you would have a lot more flack than I've got. I'm actually such a nice person that the I've BBC never had anyone come spoken to somebody since your arrest who says exactly those things, that with you it's all manipulation, there's an ulterior... Is this Sophie? Everything is this Sophie? Done. Oh, it's Sophie, the, the, the fake name, no face, no I was so the, the story that was invented. to please him and wanting him to be happy that I was just kind of, yeah, okay, do whatever you want. And what is she accused? Has she accused me of a crime? This imaginary. I'm sorry, but he lost me from the jump when he literally said, You have, um, I never wrote those things on my website um, about. I, I never wrote those things that basically self-incriminate about how I was doing lover boy sex trafficking on my website. Like when you say that everything fucking falls apart. Like you, you said it on video, you wrote it on your website. You literally sold it as a package to other people to teach them. It's done. Sophie? She's making the point that there is... Has she accused me of a crime? ...emotional or psychological manipulation. I've asked you a question, and I've allowed you into my house. I'm asking you a question. Correct, but you're not the boss here, because I've allowed you into my house. I'm asking you the question. Correctly, and I'm telling you. You get to decide the answers. No, we're equal here. I've allowed you into my house. You don't come here with a position of authority. I'm doing you the favor as legacy media, giving you relevance by speaking to you. And I'm telling you now, this Sophie, which the BBC has invented, which is no face of, nobody knows who she is. The and BBC did not invent Of her. course not. And she, because you never invent anything. And she has not filed, she's not filed criminal charges against me. What are we talking about here? What We're is she talking saying? talking about emotional manipulation. Has she, the sex industry for your financial a, gain. Absolute garbage. She has not filed criminal, this person, if they exist, has not filed criminal charges against me. I welcome anybody who believes I've harmed them, male or female, any point in the past to file criminal charges against me, I'll fight them. I know who I am, and I know what I've done, and I know the truth, and I know that I'll be found innocent. Motherfucker said, I I'm giving you relevance, dude. Like he said, I'm giving you relevance. Like, you should be excited for, for me giving you relevance. Like, that's insane. He, and he's talking to the BBC chat. Like, that's insane, dude. What are you talking about? Like, that is the platform. Also, if you're giving him relevance, doesn't that make you a fucking idiot? Why would you ever allow the BBC into your fucking house? I mean, it does make him an I idiot for the record. But, like, it would make him extra stupid if he was, like, doing it out of the kindness of his fucking heart. You know what I mean? This attack. The reason I'm being attacked is because of my massive influence, not because I've ever hurt anybody. And for you to sit here and say that everybody around you is saying you're innocent, but that doesn't matter because the state will say they're victims and they're just going to grab everybody you know and call everybody victims even if they say they're not, and try and put you in jail, you are describing a matrix attack. You're not describing human trafficking. I'm describing women who are going to court to accuse matrix you of attack. human trafficking. We and will women, see what women go. We will see this? what women go to court at the end of this trial. Please? We'll see which women go. Can to I court. finish, please? We'll see which women go to court. That's ominous. I'm describing women who are going to court to accuse you of rape and human Sophie trafficking. Sophie hasn't gone to court. Sophie and doesn't exist. I'm describing. Brother. You cannot be like a fucking 40 year old man and say the matrix attack in a serious setting where you're being interviewed by the BBC for your sex trafficking and rape trial that's ongoing in the nation of Romania. Okay. That is not allowed. You cannot do that. You can't say the matrix attack. You're not like 14 years old and you watched the matrix for the first time women who have spoken to the BBC at length Sophie doesn't exist. and other media ex organizations about what they say is emotional manipulation and coercion and I'm quoting back to you your own words where you describe they're not my words coercion they're words you found they're words you found on the internet and Sophie doesn't exist on so let's me. move on to the next subject <laughs> they're words you found on the internet of me 
points. Move on to the next subject. No, I think I'll stick on this one for a minute. So there's other places in that same website where you say you get girls to fall in love with you and they do it because they love you, because they want to do what you say. Convincing women to take part in some kind of business arrangement doesn't work long term because they're emotional. You've got to get them to fall in love with you. Once That's coercion. That's emotional manipulation. That's abuse. What you've found are clips from the internet. Some text from the internet, and you're going to sit here and tell me uh, that that's of, the reason. Of you. Your it. website, your words. It's not my website. Y yes, what? It yes, it is. Not. Check my website. Next. It's the website. Motherfucker said, check my website. I deleted it. <laughs> I should know. Check my website. I deleted those words, so they don't exist. <laughs> taken down, and I wonder why. Tater Tots defend him better than himself. Not really. I think Tater Tots are just this stupid, if not dumber than fucking Andrew Tate. They're just repeating whatever the fuck he's saying. Half the time, half the time, what he's saying is so transparently fucking stupid. You just like, the only way you would understand, the only way you would agree with it is if you have his dick so far lodged down your skull that it's like interfering with your brain. That's the only way you could go, you can look at this and go, oh God, he's so cool. No cap. Those comments have been taken down. No website, no website's been taken down. My website is the same. It's been the same for a very long time. The comments on. But he is defending good. Exactly. This is the type of person. The type of person that says, "But he is defending good." Defending what? You fucking idiot! He literally said, "Those are not my words. They are his words. It was on his website. He made videos about about it." He defend good. On this website, on the original website, have been taken down, and I wonder why. You are accusing me, I'm guessing, what you're trying to say is you're accusing me, and you're trying to say that I'm guilty of the things I'm accused of, and I'm emotionally manipulating people. I'm saying that you have said you emotionally manipulated people here for your own financial gain. No, absolutely not. And I'm asking you about that. Absolutely not is the answer. I look forward to the end of this trial, I look forward to clearing my name. I look forward to the BBC and the legacy media having to say not guilty and having to tell the truth. As I've said before, the only other person who's been found, despite absolute rigorous, destructive levels of investigation and prodding into my life, is this imaginary Sophie by the BBC who doesn't exist. And if you were to find any single other man on earth and try and analyze his life forensically to the level they've done mine, you would find genuine damage to people. I don't hurt people. It's not just- Thousands of women have come out in my defense. Thousands of women have come out in my defense and you've not mentioned that. Thousands of women come out of my defense. Because <laughs> yeah, okay, bro. Also, like, there's dumb broads out there, you know what I mean? It's not like a, that's a thing still, you know what I mean? I don't know why people are, I don't know why people always do this, where it's like, well, women defend me sometimes. It's like, okay, well, they're stupid. <laughs> And I disagree with them. Next. Because the problem is when women accuse you of serious crimes. Okay. And emotional but manipulation. Let's agree that That's thousands of women. Uh, let's agree that it's thousands. It's not a problem that some people say you haven't done it. It's a problem that some people say you have. Thousands of women come out in my defense. And as we stand right now, we have an open criminal investigation. The people who are involved in the criminal investigation are saying that we're not victims of anything. Andrew's fine. He's never hurt us. You're saying, no, I have the opposite to that. I have to counter that. I have someone called Sophie with no face, a fake name, who we've invented, and she's not accusing you of anything criminal. So you, I don't see the whole point you you're trying to make You say you here. manipulate women. They say you manipulate women. Why wouldn't people think you do? I'm not here. Do you think I'm manipulating you? I'm asking you about the testimony you've given on your website and the testimony no, women you're, you've you, given You've printed it. something off that you found on Reddit, and you're going to sit here and say that that makes me a bad person. I'm Wait, what? No, no. It's on the Wayback Machine. It is on your website. What is happening here? This is truly a remarkable, this is truly a remarkable situation. And people actually are like, like, this is such a win for Andrew as a woman, wife, sister, mother. I would 100% like the men in my life to be hardworking, disciplined, strong, and stoic. Master at his crap. This man is a legend. We need to protect this man at all costs. That's wild, man. 
saying that you should know better as a journalist and, and do some proper journalism. Let's investigate the fact that I thousands... I think you should answer my questions I am. I, am. I already have, and we should move on. She's just trying to start arguing. It's not only about the criminal allegations. It's a, a much bigger issue. You've got children's organisations in the UK. You've got rape organisations in the UK. You've got the police naming you by name as someone who has a harmful influence on children and on women in the UK and elsewhere because of the things you say, because of the way you present gender relations, the way you say men should treat women. That's very upsetting. And the reason that's very upsetting is because I know that's not true. I'm genuinely a good person. I believe my impact on the world is positive. In fact, if you were to read the comment section of nearly any video I post, especially on <laughs> legacy media. Not that's awesome. Dude. Read the comment section of any video I post. I'm a good person is not exactly a defense that would hold up in court or anywhere for that matter. What kind of fucking take is this? I've never been like, let's go to the comments to see what like the brain trust has to say in a, I've never used that in a positive manner. If anything, you always go to the comment section to see the stupidest fucking takes. And sometimes you get pleasantly surprised when you land on a comment that is actually well thought out. You can't on the one hand be like, you got your information from Reddit. And then on the other hand, point to YouTube comment sections and TikTok comment sections for the beacon of uh, intellect. That's worse than Reddit. 95% of the population agree with me. Most people know that the things I say are positive. Legacy media as a whole has lost all its credibility in the last three to four years. Nobody believes it. And it's a shame, it's a massive shame that the BBC come here and try and push and purport this idea that I'm a dangerous person. I'm anti-drugs, I'm, I'm anti so I've never pu pushed drugs or any, uh, I'm anti-drugs, I'm anti-violence. The UK is facing a knife crime epidemic and they're well, gonna sit here and say, they're gonna sit here and say that I'm the most dangerous man in the UK. You have said you're the most dangerous man in the world. I've said I'm the most dangerous man in the world. You've also said that a woman's intimate parts belong to her male partner. I'm glad you find that. Why is he laughing? He did say that. Like, he said that so many times. Wait, why is he laughing? I, I don't understand. Like, I mean, it's a joke for the most part, but it's a joke only when you realize that, like, the world... But I do like that they brought that back. You're right. That's Thank a really you. good point. Thank you. Now, because we talked about this. Because I'm <laughs> doing it. Freaks and Tato things, man, the world. I can't walk the street without people coming up to me saying, Top G, Top G, Top G. That's fine. But I am walking the streets now with bodyguards, and I'm going to tell you all why. I'm <laughs> doing it for your protection, mm. not my protection, your protection. And I want to explain something to you. Anyone who's followed me long enough knows I've had an eclectic life. Anyone with a brain can look at us and think of how much money we've made, the places we live, look at our Instagram, where we go, mm. and the kind of lives we've lived, been associated with, still associated with. I'm not gonna get too much brain in the internet. Mm. I have enemies. You cannot just run up on me while I'm walking somewhere, sprint over to me at speed, and expect not there to be an altercation. I would rather end you and then work out you were a fan than me get ended. I'm saying this, and I'm saying this with absolute fucking seriousness. Be careful. As a professional, when you see me, you approach me the same way you approach a nervous horse. You don't run over making fast movements, you get kicked in the fucking face. I'm tired of walking down the street and people seeing me at the corner of their eye and sprinting over to me. I don't know you people. I don't know you. And I don't like groups of full grown men running up to me. Mm. So I've started walking around with bodyguards. The reason I have bodyguards is so that they can stop you getting close enough to me where I'm forced to react. But if you see me, approach slowly, respectfully, and carefully. Yeah. Because I'm telling you, my trigger finger swift, and I would rather make a mistake than die. I don't like it. And I'm making this very, very yeah, he's very he's he's a very dangerous man. Remember he was like the type of dude. Remember when he was like talking about how he was like uh constantly scared that his like there was just like random dicks everywhere, you know what I mean? And there's just like random dicks left and right like he, he that that could uh end up sneaking into his girlfriend at the time. Do not approach me swiftly. I do not want to piss my pants on accident in public. It will be a pee-pee time. 
and it will not be a good time for me. I've made Tristan wash all of my laundry on a weekly basis. Funny. I find it funny that you're sitting here saying that I've said I'm the most dangerous man in the world and, you're, and you believe that's... When did I say that? I'm asking if you believe it. No, you said, you said you said you're the most dangerous man in the world. Is that some kind of proof that I'm dangerous? Am I Dr. Evil now? I'm telling you that it's very upsetting that you're going to sit here and that certain organizations in the world are going to try and pretend that I'm the biggest force of evil on earth when I'm genuinely I'm a force for good. I'm genuinely a force Not for good. And the, and the reason they're doing this is because of the massive influence I have over the youth. And they don't like that I'm telling the youth to think outside of the matrix and ignore things like the BBC, which come people. here with loaded questions and false narratives and try and paint innocent people as, as, as guilty. You said women's intimate parts belong to their male parts. I said that if a woman marries a man, she takes his last name and traditionally the man gives her away. I've been pushing traditional religious beliefs because I'm a religious man and traditional beliefs in regards to men. Bro, this motherfucker has been a religious man for like the past two months. Like, when did he become this religious? He was never a religious man. He just claims it now. Oh, God, people are so stupid. I cannot believe how... At this point... At this point, it's not necessarily what Andrew Tate is saying that's frustrating to me, okay? It's the fact that people believe this nonsense that's frustrating to me. Because that signals, like, something way more damaging about the state of modern society, the state of men, how they exist in this space, when, like, so many fucking dumb motherfuckers are out here, and they're like, yeah, no, on God, for real, this guy's spitting, like, he's, he's the king, he's the goat. That makes me sad, man. It's like, like, when I get mad at uh, dummies in the chat who are so asinine and, and come in. I'm in marriage makes me the most dangerous man in the world then you're just going to lose even more credibility than the BBC's already lost in the last four to five years. If that's your point, if that's your narrative you want to push, good luck. Be able to he was a fan of the old BBC. Marriage. That doesn't sound very religious or that's very not, That's not what I said they should be able to. I said a lot of high-value men, a lot of rich men do it. And then we discussed at length on podcasts why rich men do it. And we also discussed why women decide to be unfaithful. It's not. I like that this also has, like, the energy of debating a flat earther where you're forced to, like, address the stupidest talking points ever. Like, well, if you didn't listen to my three-hour podcast where I described why high-value men fuck around, it's like, what are you saying, man? Like, no, nobody fucking should ever watch that, okay? You're not learning anything in that regard. You're not, you're not learning anything when you do that. It's not a gendered argument. We discuss unfaithfulness as a whole. What are the reasons and motivation? Wait, did this guy say... You constantly ignore his counter arguments. Why don't you debate him face to face instead of hiding like a coward? Yeah, why don't I debate him face to face? That's bait, right? There's no way. Because I did debate him face to face. Twice, as a matter of fact. He cried like a baby on both of them. He ran away. Also, I am addressing his counter arguments. His counter arguments are like, nah, uh, I didn't do that. Hassan, they're so fragile and they're finding solace in a man who's saying what they've been thinking already for years. It confirms their bias. Patriarchal norms are deeply entrenched in boys' brains as they're forced to contend with the hypocrisy and contradiction of the stories they've been told as a child. They are pathetic, entitled babies. Lamal, I agree for men and what are the reason motivations for women because you have no time to actually you say because you have no time to actually watch my content because you have no time to actually watch my content at length and understand what i'm saying you just come here with a small snippet which has been provided to you on a piece of paper times doesn't make it true no completely you don't have a clue what, I'm, what i say or what i talk about you never watch my dude he said he has a gun for people like hasanabi did he say that about me i think he's only talked about how like women constantly compare him to me and say how much hotter he is than me I don't know if he actually said he has a gun uh, for people like me. Or was that on the debate? I think that might have literally been on. I don't know. Content. You have small you pieces of paper, small clips on a piece of paper, and you're trying to pretend I've said evil things. And then you're going to say I'm the most dangerous man in the world, which is truly laughable. You said that, not me. Okay. 
Do you believe in the most say, dangerous man in the world, Lucy? I'm not answering your questions. Well then, we, well, then we need to change the dynamic of this interview because, and I'll make this clear, I allowed you into my home. I'm, I'm doing you a favor, giving you the first interview I'm giving to the public. You don't come here with a position of authority. You're not the police. I don't respect the BBC. I don't know you. You do not come here with a position of authority over me. We are equals. We are people. We're citizens of the world. And we sit here as equals. And I see you as my equal. And if you ask me questions, I can ask you questions back. For you to come here and sit down and pretend you're the Gestapo and that you don't have to answer my questions is, is disingenuous it's because I don't owe you anything. It's me asking questions and you answer But I don't. It's my house. You have to agree with my words. My house. Oh, no. However you want. This is a conversation. And I don't owe you any degree of authority over me. So let's make that clear. And that doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman or from the BBC or the CNN. I'm here to you answer your said. questions and be honest with you and do you a favor. Correct. But And I'm doing you a favor. But you come here with loaded questions. You're trying to paint a narrative of me, which is negative. I'm asking you about that's things you said that people are concerned about. And that's fine. You but you're not going to sit here and say you don't answer my questions because you're not above me. Absolutely. Well, it, it would help if you answered the question. I've answered every question so far. Let me ask you another question. Sure. You have said that a woman's intimate parts belong to her male partner, and if she goes on OnlyFans, he is entitled to a cut of her income. You are extremely, it's actually very, it's very conf confusing to me why you're going to sit here, take long format podcasts I've done, which are three or four hours long, in context where I've sat with OnlyFans girls, 10 or 15 OnlyFans girls, where we've been joking back and forth, ignore every comment and satirical comment and sarcastic comment that the females have made, and then come along and say, you said this and that uh, you're the most evil man in the world. I don't know if you understand what sarcasm you is. Say it? I, I don't know if you understand what sarcasm is. I don't know if you understand what context is. I don't know if you understand what uh, satirical content com so comments are. So you're saying it was sarcastic? I'm saying it was a very interesting talk show. And for you to sit here and say that that is my true core beliefs and that makes me is a it? bad person is disingenuous. Is it? Of course not. Was it sarcasm? Absolutely. Or? You should watch the show. You were being sarcastic you should, when you said, let me you just should, clarify. You okay? should watch the show. Let me clarify for the audience. You were being sarcastic when you said a woman's intimate parts belong to her male partner. No. You didn't believe that. No, it's not that. It's that you haven't watched the show at length and you should have because the woman was saying, my man's car belongs to me because he's my man. And she was on OnlyFans. And then 20 minutes later, when she said she was on OnlyFans, I said, ah, well, you're selling your body. That belongs to him because he's your man. And she laughed. Do she laughed. She laughed. And she said, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, that's probably true. If you, you watch the show, it? if you watch the show, it will make sense. I like that he's saying that uh, he was taken out of context when he said that seriously so many times. It's not like she... She laughed because, like, she's like, oh, I'm in agreement. Or maybe she was. But it's still odd that uh, it's still odd that he's, like, bringing up the one time where it's like, well, she laughed. So, clearly, it was, it was just actually said in jest. And it's like, but you've said it so many times. Like, I don't even know what the, what the context was. Maybe she agrees with it, but that's only a singular individual. Uh... I've heard him say it so many fucking times. This is rough to watch because she's literally not equipped for this. What do you mean she's not equipped for this? I think she's doing a great fucking job. I think it's misogyny seeping out if you literally look at the situation and go, she's not equipped for this. No, she's been cooking his asshole for like 17 fucking minutes. What are you talking about? The only reason why she's like looking like she's weak is because she's a woman and she's talking to the woman hater. So, like, most people are going to go, oh, this is a dynamic I'm familiar with. This is like uh, Jordan Peterson destroying uh, the, the lady on Channel 4. He's fucking hysterical, dude. What are you, crazy? There's not even a single moment where he's looked good thus far. Not even a single moment. Maybe I'm looking at a different interview than you. I don't know. No, please, not misogyny, but I think she isn't well-versed on the content. What do you mean she isn't well-versed on the content? She very clearly fucking stated quotes that he had, did not let him fucking get away from it, and said, you said these words, and his answer was, nuh uh Oh, wow, owned. What are you, fucking brain dead? Are you watching this and falling for Andrew Tate's flailing? He's like literally flapping his gums and flapping his arms like a little baby bird who's just learning flight.
That's insane. I actually thought personally that uh, there wouldn't be people who are like, no, actually, Andrew Tate is destroying her in the marketplace of ideas in this community other than the fucking tater tots. She's doing incredible. She does not let Andrew Tate misdirect. She does not let Andrew Tate deflect away. She literally stays on the point over and over again and goes, answer this, answer this, answer this, answer this. And after like the 11th time where he goes, nah, uh it doesn't fucking matter. I'm sorry that you think that someone uh, who works for the fucking BBC should be analyzing 700 hours of Andrew Tate footage where he's like being different, doing different flavors of misogyny to be like, well, uh, here, actually, I have the video right here. And at uh, 1035, you didn't, uh, she did not laugh at you. Or she actually, um, uh, she actually was laughing sarcastically because she felt disheveled. Do you think that that is what journalism is? Do you think that's what journalism is about? You think journalism is about watching Andrew Tate on the Fresh and Fit podcast against Instagram thoughts? Is that what you really think someone should be doing as far as their due diligence? Are you that brain broken? Are you that permanently online brained that you literally think a journalist should actually scour through 700 hours of fucking footage every time Andrew Tate is interacted with a dumb broad or a dumbass fucking weirdo misogynist loser to like deeply dive into further context lest Mustafa thinks she get rolled. That's crazy. Why don't they do that? It would finish that argument altogether. Are you fucking, are you that I was about to say the R word. I'm so, oh my God, I caught myself. Hasn't been, it's been a very long time. Holy shit. <laughs> Are you that fucking stupid that you literally, <laughs> like, what are you saying? She straight up showed him verbatim words that he has written and his answer was, nah-uh. There is no reason to even have this conversation to begin with. But I think she's doing a phenomenal job. Lamal Hassan hates chat more than Tate changed my mind. No, of course not. I don't hate chat at all. I hate stupidity. I hate people who are, are permanently brain broken with Dunning-Kruger, where they think that they're a lot smarter than they actually are. They come in here and they have this like fucking weird attitude where he's like, uh, actually, she's getting cooked right now. And if you had the emotional capacity to comprehend, you would know that too. You know what I mean? That's what fucking pisses me off. It does frustrate that no matter how much she demolishes him, people still think that he's a genius and is being perfect. Exactly. She's doing a great job. I'm sorry, but yes, she has a team of researchers. She should do the full context so she knows how to combat him. She's doing a great job. However, she could have cooked him a little more. You are fucking delusional, okay? He is the one who just manipulated you by saying, well, actually, in that regard, that lady laughed at me, so it was clearly a joke. When you have seen 700 hours worth of fucking footage where Andrew Tate talks about how women are uh, property, women are property, women are your property. Like you say a lot of stuff about women like that they're your property. That's not what I said. I was talking about an OnlyFans company when that was question was asked. But I said that if a woman is going out with a man, she belongs to that man. That's his woman. So if she wants to do OnlyFans, she owes him some money because she's his. Yes. There you go. Is that good? Is that, do you think that's a joke? Do you think that he's joking here? Or should I pull up a hundred more fucking times where he has repeated this over and over again? Where people literally laugh when he says that because it's fucking delusional. Because people are like, what? Did somebody just say that? Like an actual human being actually say that? It's evident that she faces conservative challenges in effectively articulating her viewpoints due to frequent interruptions, which undermines her ability to present her arguments and express her opinions coherently. No, you're wrong. The only reason why you would think that he is like being alpha when he is hysterically yapping and saying, nah-uh, nah-uh, is because he's, that's the reason why he's successful to begin with, because you're like aesthetically bound to believing a guy like Andrew Tate. That's it. It's man equals win for you in this regard. I'm sorry. It's 100% the truth. Okay? 
She did her due diligence. She literally brought multiple talking points over and over again. She did not allow him to escape the top of the hour ad break. She literally told him that at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. And if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account, where you get one free Prime subscription a month. Social warrior Hassan. The only thing I socialize as a warrior is when I when I do conquest in bed with your mom, okay? You're doing more than the journalist. You're proving yourself wrong. No, you're wrong. You're being a neolib, okay? Yes. She literally told him that I'm not moving away from the subject. She definitely alphaed him in this interview. Like, what the fuck? I know. It doesn't matter. It does not matter that... Um, can you fail at taking him down from your POV, though? She doesn't need to change our minds. This needs to be aimed at the idiots that might fall for this shit. No. The point is, some people are beyond saving, okay? <sighs> some of them are in this chat right now. You're a soy boy, a pathetic excuse for a man. Literally every woman that you have ever encountered in your daily life would, if given the opportunity, fuck me over you, okay? That is, a, that is an objective fact. Let me speak in terms that you understand, you dumb ape. If you are an Andrew Tate fan, you will understand this reality, okay? I will talk to you in terms that you will get. Shut the fuck up. Perhaps you also need to be a bit more soy, I guess, so you can finally feel the touch of a woman, okay? I forgot to run the three-minute break. I'm going to run it right now. Got you is like the dumbest thing. It, it, is, the, it is the ultimate, is the classic joke where it's like, huh, dude, I got you. I was just pretending to be a fucking baboon, okay? Got you. No, like every single person, every single fucking person thinks you're a fucking idiot, dude. Everyone. Nobody, nobody looks at that and goes, wow, brilliant trolling, sir. Excellent. You really got yourself to look like a fucking idiot. <laughs> we all believed you when you were pretending to be a fucking idiot. For you to come here with doing no research at all and then say, I don't understand what I'm talking about, but I've got this piece of paper with a few things printed off. That's why you're saying the silly things you're saying. You should watch the show. Do some research. Do you believe it? You already answered I've that. already answered the question. Well, really? Of course yes, I have. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can we move on? I've answered the question. You're making, and what is the context of this? Topic? Here's another, well, here's another uh, instance of Andrew Tate talking about how he believes women I are property. I said about a woman being a man's property. I was talking about the idea of biblical marriage at the time, Christian marriage. The father walks the bride down the aisle, gives her to the groom. She takes his last name. And he is now responsible for protecting and providing for her till death do them part. She joins his family. She belongs to him. Oh no, that's, so you're saying she's property. I'm saying she belongs to him. That's I never even said the word property. Dude, this is such a pussy ass way to try and defend it. Brother, you were talking about OnlyFans. You literally said, you literally said, when a woman does OnlyFans, she's, his, she's her man's property and needs to give him money like multiple times. I've heard it with my own ears, okay? They said the word property at me. What are some of the comments that they... <laughs> it's so funny you're, when you're certainly not owned so hard that people are rushing to your defense in the background away from the camera going, hey, maybe we should stop this interview. And what I'm talking about, but I've got this piece of paper with a few things printed off. That's why you're saying the silly things you're saying. You should watch the show. Do some research. Do you believe it? I've already answered the question. Not really. Of course yes, I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we move on? I've answered the question. Do you believe that a woman's intimate parts belong to her male partner? Of course not. I've just answered the question. You just answered that. Answer that. Yeah, we've done that three times. And, and, and does this woman believe that her man's car belongs to her? We, it's, it's not a gendered argument. I really think that it's genuinely sad that when the BBC has a chance to finally interview me at the end of all this Matrix attack, that they don't come here with any kind of like, at the end of the day, you're defending a guy who unironically is using the term matrix attack at the age of 40 
while he's being investigated by the Romanian authorities for sex trafficking and also rape. Okay? Like, just remember that. So unless you're like a 14-year-old idiot who uh, is deeply and undesirably insecure about his acne and hasn't figured out Accutane yet, and maybe your body's doing weird shit because of the hormones, anyone outside of that sphere is like the biggest fucking loser for defending this person, okay? Those kids all allow, okay? Those kids all allow because like they're in a weird point in their lives Hormones are going crazy. They don't know what the fuck they're saying. They're going to grow out of it. You have already supposedly grown out of it, and yet you're still behaving like that teenage boy. Okay? Cool. Genuine openness to try and understand my influence of the world or the things I push or what I'm trying to teach Wait, the look world, at his leg. Why I'm a good influence on the world because I am a massively good influence. Instead, they come here with pieces of paper with printed out excerpts from five-year-old podcasts taken out of context to attempt the same to attempt the same matrix attack on me, which has been attempted endlessly. Every single person in legacy media has already tried this and it doesn't work. You, I really encourage you, I encourage you to read the comment section on the on YouTube when this goes on YouTube, and you will see that nobody believes a word you're saying. The this reason is garbage. I'm asking you about these comments is because we've got the chief executive of Rape Crisis naming you individually as spreading a dangerous ideology of misogynistic rape culture. Absolute. It's the comments you make that are leading people to say things like Absolute this. garbage. National organizations who are saying that, are blaming you for increasing levels of misogyny. Schools that are saying they are having increased incidents of girls being attacked, of female teachers being harassed. If that was by true. Pupils. If that was of you. Guys, you said read the comment section of a YouTube video. He's popping off. Like, man, this lady had nothing. It's so crazy when I'm debating someone and my opponent says, read the comment section of a YouTube video as an own. Well, I guess I'm fucking owned now. Call me perished, okay? I'm destroyed. That's awesome. Your talking points are from Reddit. Read the YouTube comments for the truth. Exactly. Read the Facebook comments. You and your teaching. Well, that's, abso that's absolute garbage. I have never, ever encouraged a student to attack a teacher, male or female, ever. I preach hard work, discipline. I'm an athlete. I preach anti-drug. I preach religion. I preach no alcohol. I preach uh, no knife crime. Every single problem with modern society. I'm I wish he was clear on the sources since his followers are so paranoid of the system. Brother. I don't know what to tell you. His sources or her sources are him. Okay? That's it. You can't, like, at that point, you have the source. It's his website. It's his words. Okay? Obviously, she doesn't have a fucking YouTube. Uh, she doesn't have a laptop with her, so she can't pull out the video and show him, like, what did you mean by this piece by piece? Okay? He has said all of those things. His followers like him. Because he has said all of those things. They've all they've watched all of those videos where he says those things and gone, on oh God, he's so sick with it. If you want to see him say those things, look at literally any fucking uh Andrew Tate TikTok or any Andrew Tate uh, short on YouTube with the Sigma music, and you will hear him say exactly those things. Against. I'm teaching young men. I'm teaching young men to be disciplined, to be diligent, to listen, to train, to work hard, to be exactly like me, with no criminal record, never even yet charged in this 14-month matrix investigation. And I'm saying that if men grew up like me, which are hardworking and diligent and some emotional control and stoic, we're gonna have a better society, not a worse society. To sit here and say that schools in England. England, which is a failing nation, which has knife crime going through the roof, violence going through the roof, men's mental health going through the roof, and they're going to all blame me because I appeared on the internet you one year ago, is disingenuous. It's disingenuous. You and also, an also, financial it's, success correct. with a Bugatti and a cigar, but it comes with a side order of misogyny. How does having a Bugatti and a cigar come with misogyny? Because it's all mixed together in what you teach. You teach that a woman, if a woman comes home and accuses you of cheating, you should hit her with a machete, shove her off. Is that, what I, is that what I teach? 
That's what you say. No, if you actually watch the clip, so it will be about the woman attacking me with a machete. As usual, you've not watched the video, taken out of context, flipped it, and attempted to attack me with a small excerpt. Let me tell you something, Lucy. I'm sure you're a very nice person. I'm sure you're a fantastic person. But if I were to take everything you've ever said online... He seems so stoic. I agree with you, but don't you think she's not doing a good job being an interviewer? No, I don't. I think she's doing a perfectly fine job, especially for like most of this interview so far. Okay. She and he has said those things. He has literally said those things. And he's being hyper emotional. Okay? Look at his fucking throat. She's the one who's being stoic. He's the one who's flapping his fucking arms around, going crazy. And he's like, ha, I got you. I never actually said that. It was a joke. And that's his answer. His answer is always, it's a joke. It's a joke. It's naive. It's a, you're naive. It's a joke. I was just kidding. We're, we're just about banning anybody that's not contributing to the echo chamber. Brother, let me unban you real quick so that we can have this conversation. We ban people when they're not contributing to the conversation in a genuinely constructive way. Because a lot of people come in here and go, Andrew Tate is my god king, and he actually owned this whore, okay? Yeah, of course I'm going to ban that person. Because that person is not a serious person. That person is probably on their 11th fucking sock account, okay? The idea that we're, like, banning people that are not a part of the echo chamber is so fucking stupid. I'm... I'm happy to address all of you L-taking motherfuckers all day, every day. But if I were to do that, then unfortunately, we would not be able to get through anything. We would constantly have to get stopped every time a narcissistic man-child chose to fucking come in here and say some dumb shit. That's the reason why we ban people, so we can move the conversation along. If you want to contribute something, instead of fucking crying and, and seeing other people get banned and go, oh my god. Maybe try to say something productive. Okay? He's doing exactly what he what Jordan Peterson did back in the day as well. You're clipping me out of context. Watch the four hour podcast to get better context. When in fact, now at least, we know that Jordan Peterson was always transphobic, for example. Jordan Peterson used to lie and claim he wasn't transphobic, and his fanboys would say the exact same shit. They'd be like, Oh, well, you just don't understand. Jordan Peterson is not transphobic. He's a you just haven't watched three hours of his lectures to, to fully comprehend how not transphobic he is. Okay? If you have someone you like and see them as a mentor, then say something you disagree with. Do you forget everything they said before that? What? What, what, what is the point that you're making? Are you seeing Andrew Tate as a mentor? Or are you saying Jordan Peterson is your mentor? What part of Jordan Peterson, if you like someone, do you like everything about them? No. But there are certain values that I do not mesh with, especially if your output is content. Okay, Jordan Peterson is a content creator. Jordan Peterson is a content creator. If the overwhelming majority of the content that he's putting out there is negative, transphobic, uh, and, and reactionary in general, then yes, I'm not going to like him. I'm going to correctly address that he is being a negative influence on society. <sighs> I just thought about this aspect of Jordan's career. I really think once allies who were into his health help should exited the fan base, he became a lot more straightforward about his transphobia, a pretty good indicator he was pandering to begin with. He was always transphobic. He was just better at covering it up, and he chose not to after he got fucking brain broken by benzos.
Why are you pretending you don't understand the question? Why would I pull this person up instead of just avoiding him? If I was so afraid of this question and what it poses, maybe sometimes I'm actually asking for clarity. Doesn't matter who it is. Yes, if I like someone or see them as a mentor, which I don't really see anybody as a mentor, but if they say something I disagree with, I'm not going to forget everything they've said before that. But you asked this question deliberately. You asked this question for a purpose. So I'm asking you, who are you talking about? Don't be a fucking coward and explain to me who the fuck you're talking about. Are you talking about me? If you're talking about me, what did you hear I say that you disagree with? If you're talking about Andrew Tate, why do you consider him to be a mentor? What, if, what has he done for you? If you're talking about Jordan B. Peterson, I would ask the same question. Don't fucking come in here, ask a pointed question, and then buckle like a picnic table the moment I ask you a fucking question. Stop being a pussy and say exactly what you fucking mean. And to that other chatter who thinks like I'm afraid of fucking words, what are you, stupid? This is what I do for a living. Hassan needs more soy. He's mad today. See, we're like stuff like this doesn't make me upset and it doesn't make me angry. Um, because like, yeah, no, I, I love soy. You got me. Um, it's frustrating though to deal with this because it just like signals that there's so many fucking stupid people that still use like 2014 era, like antiquated insults. You know what I mean? That's what frustrates me. It's like, dude, the people that used to say that shit are like all pathetic divorced dads who now have to like live with their mommies in their mother's basement. Okay. Like, are you one of those guys? Or are you a guy who looked at those guys and, and thought like, man, that shit's fire. I should do that. It's so cringe. I don't care who it is, brother. It's just people sometimes say stuff you disagree with. I'm not taking them away from me, probably. What? Okay, I can't. I can't. All right, take an hour off, dude. I, I, I fucking so... I just, like... Just so stupid, dude. And just take small excerpts out of context. I could make you look like a misogynist. I guarantee it. In fact, no, I, might, if, I might actually do that. And then you're going to sit here and say, oh shit, I'm a misogynist because my clips have been taken out of context. If you refuse to watch anything at length and understand it, the then that's police, what's going to happen. The National Police Chief's lead for violence against women, the NSPCC, rape crisis, safer schools, they are all naming you as being behind an epidemic of misogyny, even amongst primary school children. The idea that I made primary school children misogynistic because I own a nice car. Is that, is that, your, nice is that your argument? It's the misogyny that comes along with it. Oh, owning a nice car is misogynist. No, it's the Go misogyny on. that comes along with it. How does misogyny come along with it? This is the only part where I like don't uh, understand what point she's trying to make. Like, owning a nice car or whatever the fuck. Like, I guess she's trying to present it as like, you have presented yourself as a as a beacon of like male prosperity as someone people aspire to be and uh, and and what you're doing in that regard with all of the uh the the machismo that comes along with it what you're doing is you're also promoting a very misogynistic attitude towards uh women like in dealing with women I'm going to NASCAR. Because you you're, you have an image of financial I'm glad success. you're answering my questions now. We finally got the Niagara. You have an image of financial success. She didn't answer success. my questions, as she should. Excuse me. But she's like, yeah, I won. She answered my question. You're such a child, dude. You have an image of financial success, but it comes along with attitudes towards women that are really problematic. My attitudes towards women is that women should be protected and provided for. And I've said that at length. In fact, I've said that over 50 <clears throat> times online. You never mention it. I say that my girlfriend doesn't have to work unless she wants to. I take care of her. I die to protect a woman. I've talked about how I've stood up and faced a knife to protect a woman. And, and in return, you want authority over her in the way you have over a child or a dog. I absolutely say. not. I've said that women should be protected and provided for. And, and I in return, you want authority over her. Because if you have responsibility for someone like a child or a dog, you say, you have authority over them. If you want to go down this argument, we'll go down this nuanced argument. I said that if I have responsibility for her safety, I should have a degree of authority over her. 
I mean, the things he says is not wrong, but not exactly right either. What the fuck are you talking about, dude? Well, that's insane. Oh, aye, aye, aye. For safety. Meaning, meaning, and let me explain my point. If I'm the one who has to fight and die to protect her, I'm the one who decides how we walk home. I'm the one who decides the route we take. Because it's unfair for her to say, I want to walk through the most dangerous neighborhood in the world, but you have to face the knives. That's what I've said. And then you're going to sit here and pretend that I'm trying to treat women like dogs, which is garbage. Every you single man, person. every single man in the world who loves this woman understands that he has to protect her. And every single woman in the world the woman likes the idea of a woman, of a man who would protect her. If you were to say to most women home right now, do you want your husband to protect you in a violent attack? They'd say, yeah, of course. Nothing I've said if is misogynistic. If you said to most women, would you want to lose... He's trying to ship if Theseus' way out of this uh, argument. That's his counter. Is like his counter is not necessarily the 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 actual bulk of the argument or what she's presenting, but instead, uh, oh, you brought up knives. I hate knife crime. It's like, dude, that's not what she's saying. Oh, you brought up a car. Well, oh, I have a car. Does that mean I'm a misogynist because I have a nice car? It's like you're not doing anything. You're 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 not listening to what she's saying. Or you're fucking floundering, or floundering around like a little baby because you don't have any fucking counter. I hate arguing with idiots. They wield stupidity like a cudgel and box you about the ears. Yeah. ...authority in the relationship to not be treated as a free and legal equal... I didn't say that. I, I said... For the record, even if, even if she brought clips, for those of you saying, I wish she had brought clips... You think he wouldn't be fucking countering every single one of those clips with... That's a joke. That's literally what he's doing when she brings up talking points that he has made on paper. Talking points that you have seen on camera a thousand times over. It doesn't matter. Brother, that's why I said from the beginning, the moment that he said, that's not my website, it's just words you saw on an internet uh, page... That's when you had to have realized, like, this is not a person who is going to, understandably even, uh, defend any of the things that he's done. Everything that makes him look bad, he's going to say is a lie. Even if, uh, even if she brought clips, he, was, he would say, well, that was actually a joke. I need to have authority over the when route you, we walk home. When you compare women and the authority over women that you believe you should have to having authority over a child or a dog, it's not the same because a woman is a free, legal adult. Correct. You're equal. Free, legal adult, my equal. But if I had a girlfriend and we were walking home late at night and I said, let's not walk down that area. It's a bad area. I have to protect you. Everything happens. I want to take the long way. And she said, no, I will. I have to walk this way. Even though it's the most dangerous route, I must. Then what? And then I would say, you're welcome to. You could do it. You're a free and legal equal. But I'm not going to walk with you and protect you. I think that I should be able to decide the route. Because I have an obligation. The only reason why I looked better than she did when I debated Andrew Tate is because I'm a man. And that is an advantage if you are a man. When you're watching two men uh, duke it out, that's literally the reason. If it comes across like I did a better job to you, it's quite literally because he can't hit me with the same shit because I can talk louder than he can. You know what I mean? She's doing a very good job. But this is an implicit, this is a part of implicit biases. Like, it's something you can't really escape. Okay. And it is, in many respects, a big advantage that I have over a ton of other commentators in the space because, you know, I look a certain way and I carry myself a certain way. And that's actually part of the reason why they're always so desperate to be like, oh, you wore a dress, remember? Or you paint your nails, you're gay. Like, it's to combat the way that people perceive me when they look at me. Oh, don't look at him right now. Don't think that he's like six foot four. 245 pounds think of like how actually he's soy because he wore a dress one time you know what i mean that is a deliberate way to try and like i guess uh make me seem less masculine even if your eyes are perceiving me as something entirely different and it's not effective of course and the other side of that the other the flip side of that is always people like sneeko or uh so many other people that are like you know a hundred pounds soaking wet go Oh, I'm the big masculine alpha dog, actually. You know what I mean? It's like Sneeko saying that, like, me and Charlie are weak and soy when he looks like a stick figure. You know what I mean? 
Or when Ben Shapiro talks about traditional masculinity and and uh, gender norms when he himself doesn't fit in it. You know what I mean? It's like a way to try and make themselves seem like they're uh, something that they're not. Okay? A lot of people, no matter what their background is, is will still fall prey to the aesthetics. And I think that is a big advantage that I have. Uh, the way I carry myself, the way I talk, the way I look, the way I act, ultimately is like an immediately effective counter to the red pill bullshit. Because all of those red pill guys... They say all the masculine alpha dog shit, but they don't look the part in the way that I do, for example. You can't turn around and be like, you're ugly and you need to be a, a, a fucking feminist to fuck women. You know what I mean? You can't say that to me. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what my fucking political perspective is. That's it. And my obligation as a man is to protect and provide for females. Everything I'm talking about is, gen is traditional gender roles, which 10 years ago, less than 10 years ago, would not be considered outlandish, would not be considered crazy, would not be considered dangerous or misogynistic. The world has changed. And a lot of people haven't changed with the world. Please understand there's a lot of women at home watching this right now who like the idea of their man sticking up for them, protecting them, protecting them and providing for them. And just because the world has gone crazy and the legacy media has gone crazy, most people at home are still relatively sane. There and these are the people difference. who are going to write in the comments that Andrew was not saying there's anything that's outlandish. Yeah, once again, um, appealing to the majority is not an argument. You're not making an effective counter here. You're just saying that, like, your fans are going to agree with you. It's like, yeah, no shit. That's why they're your fans, dumbass. Every time he says, like, well, plenty of people think this. Plenty of people think this. He has no actual, he has no actual uh, uh, real basis for making this claim. It's always, read the YouTube comments, or many women have emailed me. Okay? This is my, it's the whole world believes these things. Look at him, look at him fucking, look at him nervously, uh, just, <laughs> nervously, look at his leg, just twitching like a motherfucker. I'm having a nice conversation with you, so I'm enjoying it. So it's no problem. It's been fun so far. It's fine. We good? Yes. Tell me when. Do you want to clap again? Yes, I am. No, no. We didn't stop, no? I can do the clap. Now we good? No, no, no. Thank you. Thanks. If a man broke into your house, wouldn't you want your, wouldn't you want your husband to protect you? There's a difference between conservative values and emotional control, coercive control. We're talking about concerns. protection now, and I'm saying if someone broke into your house, would you... I love this argument. It's like, okay, what if it's a bigger man than you and you die? What if the man has a gun and you can't reach your gun? I hate this hypothetical argument so much. If the only use you have is some, like, hypothetical situation where you're actually going to, like, physically engage in combat then what good are you? The entire purpose and the entire basis for why we as humans decided to live near bodies of water and create what we know as a society is so that we can relegate a lot of this responsibility and, and, and have a comfortable layer of security when we live with one another. The notion that we are cavemen and that we need to brave the elements is a silly one. You do not live in a cave. You live in a compound in Romania, okay? Surrounded by security guards, as a matter of fact. If you are such a big, burly, alpha dog man, you would have no security guards. You would have no need for cameras. You would just be handling motherfuckers with your own bare hands, okay? It's so, in, it's so stupid when dudes go, uh -huh. What if a fucking rapist broke into your house and was about to, like, physically rape you? And he was like, 
perfectly large enough to rape you, but also small enough and, and I guess blind enough to not see me coming from behind so I could execute him John Wick style. I'm like, oh, wow, that's a wonderful fantasy that you have in your head, but that is not how people make decisions in their real lives, okay? And that is certainly not a justification for misogyny or operating on this basis. How many fucking dudes are actually in a situation where they're physically protecting their significant other on a day-to-day basis? It doesn't happen. And even if it did happen, it's up to the fucking... It's completely up to circumstances in that regard. If the person has a gun, you're screwed. What are you going to do? Okay? Lol, what? You sound dumb today, says David Dangles. Please, instead of saying, lol, what? You sound dumb today, explain what you mean. Why do I sound dumb? What is your counter? What is the argument that you have here? I'm sick and tired of motherfuckers that come in here and go, you sound dumb today. Okay? Please. Anyway. <sighs> wouldn't everyone want to be protected in that situation? I don't get why he's presenting it as something only women would desire. Yeah, that's precisely why I said, Andrew, you are surrounded by security, a, 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 a broad security apparatus. Do you not feel like you are capable of defending yourself on your own? Maybe it seems like you have a security apparatus for the threat that you uh, perceive is going to happen to you. Everyone wants security. It's not exclusive to women, and men aren't the only ones capable of doing it. Somebody broke into Andrew's house and stole his hair? Yeah. You want your husband to protect you? It's not about conservative values or protection. It's what you're demanding in return for that. Well, I'll give you this. I don't know who your husband is. I don't know if he would stand up to protect you or die for you, but I'll give you this. If someone broke into this house right now and was a homicidal maniac, I would expect me and the other men in this room to stand up and face them while you and the women, you and the other women in this room could protect yourselves. I would actually That's not on the basis of manhood, you fucking idiot. It's capabilities, but instead, you wouldn't be the one doing shit, okay? It would be your security. And what if he has a gun? Then you're dead. So shut the fuck up. God, I hate this. I hate these arguments. They're so stupid. Okay? My ex-boyfriend, a tater tot to his core, threw me in the way when a guy tried to fight him. These motherfuckers are all talk, no action. No, it's precisely the problem. That is precisely the fucking problem. It's not what Andrew Tate would actually do. It's about how men see themselves. He's saying things that he would do in that situation. Okay? And he's a professional fighter. Like, he's a kickboxer. Make no mistake. I would not be able to beat him up in an organized fight. Okay, I would never say that I could. Having said that, however, if someone with a gun who wanted to kill him walked into his fucking house, the, the professional kickboxing goes away real quick. He would not be able to genuinely defend himself against someone in that hypothetical scenario. In this hypothetical situation that will never happen, I would defend you. So why are you mad at me is exactly what the argument he's making. And it's very stupid. men should go and engage the attacker. I believe that. And even though I don't know you, and you've come into my house with a hostile... No one in the red, no one in red pill is nervous or thinks they can't comment on me because of how you look. You don't think there's people out here who think you look ugly? Is this an alt account for someone in the red pill who accidentally wrote comment on me? Is this Andrew Tate's alt account? What? Because of how you look, you don't think there's people out here who think you look ugly? Of course there are people out here who think I look ugly. Are you crazy? Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. 
I would never say that I'm universally attractive. I'm simply stating that in comparison to my peers on the right wing, okay, in comparison to my peers on the right wing who portray themselves a certain type of way, like masculine alpha dogs, me being six foot four and 250 fucking pounds plays a role that you normally wouldn't be able to, you normally would not ever have to think of. That's why they work so hard to be like, nah, you're gay, actually. You're soy. Because what you are seeing objectively with your eyes is not that. That's it. That's why they're like, oh, you have to wear a dress. <sighs> agenda, and you've come here to try and make me look bad. I, I would still, I would still stand up. I would still stand up to protect you. I would still stand up to protect you because I believe that's my role as a man. I am asking you about things that you have said that have caused major national organizations, including the police, to worry about you by name. The, that's what I'm asking you it's about. It's not what I said. It's not about whether you protect your partner or not. It's about what you have said that has caused such concern in the UK. And I want to put it to you that you don't really care about the harm it caused. That's not true. Because that's not true. making controversial statements like this online has made you a lot of money. Okay, so first thing. I genuinely am a force for good in the world. You may not understand that yet, but you will eventually. And I genuinely believe I'm acting under the instruction of God to do good things, and I want to make the world a better place. I genuinely believe my legacy is a good legacy, and I believe that eventually when the legacy... Dude, this is like, this is just him signal boosting to his core. Saying like, no, 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 I'm a good person. Only if you already believe that Andrew Tate is a good person do you look at this fucking video and go, yeah, he comes across as, like, owning this person. And the overwhelming majority of people do not think that, okay? It's just his, like, dumbass loser fan base who he has misguided and misdirected for a very long time that feels this way, and they just unfortunately will continue feeling this way Unless they, you know, snap the fuck out of it. It's crazy. As the media catches up, they're going to understand I'm a good positive influence. I'm not interested in damaging the world for money. Because if I was interested in damaging the world for money, I could have sold drugs. Or I could make rap music and encourage everyone to stab each other like all the drill artists do. Or you could make... He has made rap music. Controversial statements online that attract a lot of followers who you then direct to your website. I could where make, they pay. I could make jokes. Sure. Like you. I mean, I could make I could make jokes online. Who doesn't? I mean, I could make a joke online. Are you online. saying that all the controversial things you've said are jokes? No, I'm saying that these organizations and the BBC who are going to sit here and pretend that I am the face of damaging the youth is absolutely good. Yeah, I mean, the only part that I like don't fully agree with with respect to what people have said about Andrew Tate is that like it's not like he invented misogyny. He, he definitely, um, he definitely contributed to more of it happening, but he didn't invent it. You know what I mean? I don't think anyone is saying he invented it anyway, but he became the face of misogyny. It skyrocketed him to success. And that's, that's it. That's, and now he's like suffering the consequences of it on top of the illegal things that he's done. His overall argument is that he's extremely in the extremely likely situation where I manipulate you and use you as a sexual servant is justified uh, justified by me defending you in the highly unlikely situation where someone intends to abuse you more than me. Yeah. Garbage. It's completely disingenuous. It and the happen. reason... And the reason I'm sorry. We have agreed to do an interview where you are going to ask questions that are going to give us the opportunity to clarify some things. These are very loaded I'm questions. Sorry. And so far... I'm, I'm sorry. Know. I have arranged this and I'm talking right now. So, these are very loaded questions and this is not what we discussed. And this is not a conversation that we agree We were very to. clear you're that the questions there, are, are sitting there, uh, our... You're sitting there and just accusing. We're not here to face new allegations. Damn, it seems like Andrew Tate needed a woman to defend him, huh? Good thing. Good thing there was a woman there to defend his ass. Maybe he should be her sexual servant. Mummy, mummy, come save me, mummy. This has all been discussed, answers have been provided, so if we could please move on from this side of the interview, I would appreciate it. I would like to hear what Andrew has got to say about the fact that when you make controversial statements, it attracts people to follow you, and then you direct them to your website where they pay you a monthly fee to learn how to be like you. And so the more controversial statements you make, the more money you get. 
the fact that that's the path you've outlined to one, my online university, and two, my presence on the internet. The fact that you... Okay, she nailed it. That is precisely what he does. I believe that's the path. Just shows you've done absolutely zero research. Gen gen genuinely zero research. Okay, so how many of the people who sign up for Hustlers University come to you through your social media? Genuinely zero research. How and many I of the people who sign up for Hustlers Yeah, she's cooking him again. She's cooking him again. Anytime he's getting cooked, anytime he's getting cooked, he's just like, oh, you, you, you suck, you're wrong. University come to you through your social media where you direct them to the website. And Lucy, I encourage you to go out there, do some genuine research, watch my videos. My wa questions. Of course, watch my videos at length. Well, yeah, he's like, watch my videos. It's like, dude, 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 answer the question. Truly understand what I'm doing. How many of the people who sign up for Hustlers University at forty nine ninety nine a month come to you because they see your social media comments? There's an online school called, Hustlers, have... called Hustlers University, which I don't own. I influence for, along with many other influencers. And they sign up for your website, which I don't own. And once again, that's once again, once once again, once again, that's nothing to do with me. And you're going to sit here and say that I made a joke. You were the I made a joke online four years ago because a woman said that she owned her man's car, and you made a joke, and that means that you, because you have a bigotty and the most misogynistic, dangerous man in the world, this is going down a path of absolute insanity. It's not true. None of this is true. I don't hurt people. I don't harm people. I'm genuinely a positive influence. You are influence. renowned. I'm, I'm renowned. For offensive and controversial That's not why I'm renowned. I'm actually renowned. I'm actually renowned for helping young men because we talk about there's a men's mental health crisis and we talk about we pretend to care that men are upset. But as soon as I discuss men's issues, it's misogynistic. It doesn't have to be gendered. Just because I believe men have a point of view and men have rights and men are allowed to think and believe and, and act a certain way that helps them internally, that doesn't mean it's anti-female. In fact, I believe it's actually pro-female. I think when a man is true to his influence and true to his essence and he's good within himself, he's a positive influence in the world and he's positive for the women around him. So Just because so I discuss men's things? issues, people say, oh, you're anti-woman. I'm not anti-woman, I love women. Why are so many women saying that when their boyfriend starts- Yeah, we just moved away. We just moved away from the main point of contention. She literally was saying, you use like inflammatory rhetoric to, you know, captivate men and then you lure them into your dumbass multi-level marketing scheme, which is exactly what I told him. And his answer to me at the time was no different. And that was like six fucking months ago. He straight up said, I'll just join Hustlers University on your own and you'll find out. And it's like, he's just saying that same exact thing, but with like a little bit different of a spin. That's it. Like, he's got nothing, dude. Same strat. It's crazy. It was almost a year ago. Holy fuck. You talked to him? Yes. I fucking destroyed his life. Oh, <sighs> they're not they experience more control so many they experience how many more abuse how many enough 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 well it's the first time i've heard of it so in fact One this is my favorite counter uh this is my favorite counter for the andrew tate dick riders is like when they have nothing they're like oh dude you're a fan yeah bro don't even give a shit about you yeah yeah dude i'm a fan is that why you're in here Trying to defend daddy when he looks really fucking terrible again. How long, how long have I remained in your mind that you feel the need to come to a dude's Twitch page that you don't even like? How, how much? And you're doing it at the behest of another man who doesn't know who you are, who can't even currently leave his house. Think about that. That's pathetic, dog. Even Kaya's mad at you. One is too many. Uh, oh, of course, yeah. So, of, in fact, I've seen thousands that she's gonna and thousands poop. of comments and have endless emails from women praising the, fact, praising the fact that their sons are listening to me. Praising the yeah, yeah, thousands of women. They're always emailing me saying, that guy who wears dresses, he sucks. He, you're way sexier than he is. The fact that the the things I'm saying me. does not worry you. It would worry, it would worry. You're concerned about it would, it would worry me if I was genuinely damaging the world. But for you to sit here and say, Andrew, you've become the most Googled man in the world. You have billions of views and one woman, one, is now saying that her husband is I'm not the same man she wants him to be. When thousands and thousands of people are saying the opposite, 
Well, then I would say I've that that's... I've presented you with case after case after case, with quote after quote after quote, of people who are genuinely concerned about the impact you're having, and you brush it off as if it's nothing. This part I don't like. The whole, like, oh, plenty of women say you've, like, ruined uh, uh, men. It's just, like, men were shitty. He's just a vector. He's just, like, uh, he utilized how shitty men were. That's it. You know what I mean? That's it. These dudes are... These dudes... I'm sorry. These dudes suck, okay? They're in this chat right now, some of them. They suck. Like, shifting that blame over specifically to Andrew Tate, is silly. He's just the one who only took advantage of the, the misogynistic uh, opinions that these guys had. He just capitalized on it. They're teenagers. They'll grow out of it. They're, if they're adults, they'll grow out of it, hopefully. Bro's defensive rape is literally boss. Look at the probability. Luma fail. I don't know. Men aren't shitty. Most of them are fucking traumatized. What? What do you mean most of them are traumatized? What the fuck are you talking about? If misogyny ended with Andrew Tate when his impact was softened by, uh, when his impact was softened by like getting censored on TikTok and shit, misogyny would have ended or at least diminished rapidly. Are there any Tate takes you agree with? Um, I'm sure there are. He says a lot of, like, agreeable things regularly as well in a sea of, like, insanity. No, what you have done. His trans take was funny. I'd rather fuck Megan Fox. I'd re I'd rather fuck Megan Fox with a dick who's a 10 out of 10 than like Shrek with a pussy. That was that was a fire one. Is come here with an or Hulk Hogan with a pussy. Yeah. Agenda. You come here with loaded questions. You come here with things taken out of context. You come here with things that you don't understand are satirical. And then you're going to also sit and say that one woman said that her boyfriend changed when he watched one of your videos. And, and then I don't know what you expect me to say to that. That's fantastic and jokes. No, that's how you explain no, the comments that, you make. No, for you to sit down. Would you like to apologize for any of them? Uh, for you to sit down. And <laughs> for you to sit down. It's fine. No, it's fine. It's easy. For you to sit down. Yeah, dude, that, that part is like, this is so funny. Look. I apologize for any of them. Uh, for you to sit down. And <laughs> for you to sit down. It's fine. No, it's fine. It's easy. For you to. It's fine. It's fine. It's easy. Yeah, dude, that's great, man. You're you're killing it. You're really holding it together real well in this extended cut. If anything, the BBC did him a fucking favor by not airing the entire interview. And this dumbass still posted it. And yet, for some weird reason, his audience still thinks just by the sheer virtue that this extended cut exists, it must imply that he did a better job in the extended cut. He did not. And anyone with a fucking brain could see that he did not. But, you know, it was very clever. It's a very, ma it's a masterful gambit, sir. It's like the Elon Musk dick riders. You know what I mean? Yeah, he posted this. The Tate cut. Masterful gambit, sir. By showing how fucking obliterated you are and how hysterical you got when trying to defend some of the things that you've said in the past that are now being used as evidence against you in a court of law, you really showed everyone how smart you are. You sit down and say that one woman said that um, her boyfriend watched an Andrew Tate video and now he won't do the dishes or, or whatever your, your argument is Police. and that I'm somehow the worst, most dangerous man in the world because I have a car. It's just disingenuous and I'm enjoying this interview I'm very take much her out because again. this shows, this shows the world. It's great. It shows the world the truth about the legacy media because they beg me for interviews. They beg me. You have been begging me for months. Please, we need to. Yeah, totally. Certainly. Why did you do it then, idiot? You look like a f you, and they'll make you look bad. Okay? You're so fucking stupid and so high on your own supply of farts that you literally think you can manipulate this interview into making you look good. And it didn't work.
No, I can't take I can't take her out right now because she's barking. She's being bad. I'm not going to respond to her when she's barking because you're not supposed to. You're not supposed to give any feedback when uh, someone is misbehaving, lest you teach them that that is how you're, they're supposed to behave. Good girl, sit. Hey, okay. she she's quiet now. Anyway. Irrelevant. And then you come here with loaded questions trying to paint a picture of me, which is completely and utterly false. I am a good positive influence for the world. The things I teach men are stoicism, discipline, self-respect, hard work, obeying authority, listening to your fight coach, working hard in school, making as much money as possible in your job. If you actually watch the things I say, if you actually watch my comments about women, I've done long podcasts for hours long about females, talking about protecting for them, providing for them, how I believe women should be treated in a relationship. I've done all of this, but you don't watch any of it, and then you come here and ask me that, answer questions I've answered at length thousands of times. Since you came out of custody, there seems to have been a lot about your charity work. Correct. On your social There's media. Always, I've always done the charity work, but now I'm promoting it. There seems to be a real shift. Yeah. I wonder what's behind that. Well, I've always done the charity work. I've been doing the charity work for years. I believe that it's my legacy to leave a positive influence on the world, and I've been doing charity work for over five years. Post my incarceration, my unfair, unjust incarceration, may I add. Post that, I've made it more clear the charity work I'm doing. But this is, again, once again, very interesting. I spend $25 million a year feeding children, men, male children, and female children, in, in Turkey, in Syria, in Iran, and Iraq. I literally spend $25 million a year feeding children, and I'm still the worst man in the world because, because four years ago I made a sarcastic comment. Because some people would look at that and say, okay, so before you got money from attracting people to your website by making controversial comments, but that might have got you into trouble, and so now you're looking for a new market. You're looking for a new market of followers who are attracted by a different sort of persona. I've always done the charity work, so that is obviously incorrect. And I have proof that I've always done the charity work, so you're wrong, firstly. I believe that if you have a lot of wealth, you should help people, and I'm helping people. I also think it's very, very interesting that you could not find another celebrity in the UK or anywhere else who's spending 25 million pounds a year feeding children in war-torn countries. I'm doing that, and I've been doing that for a long time without even mentioning it. I never even said it. And now that I've said it, people are going to attack me for it and say that it's disingenuous. Just the, the person in Sudan who's eating the meal, do you think they believe it's disingenuous? No, I think they, I think they feel pretty good that Andrew Tate fed them. And to sit here and say that I'm a bad person now because I'm manipulating charity, because I'm using charity, I'm just trying to do good in the world. That's all I've ever been trying to do. When women speak out against you online, disagree with what you say, they describe being bombarded with rape threats, with death threats, trolling by your followers. Would you like to say anything to your followers about sure. how to behave in that situation? Absolutely, correct. I would love to do that. First things first, I've yet to see a female stand up and, and argue with me online. I don't ever see hardly any. The only women who message me agree with me. Secondly, I don't think that anybody who disagrees with me, male or female, should be trolled. I don't think they should be insulted or attacked. I think the ideas should be discussed openly and fairly and maturely. It doesn't matter if a man agrees with me or disagrees with me or a female. I don't think my followers should come along and attack her. And if my followers are doing that, I'm upset by that. But let's make a very important clarification. That's not my followers. That's the internet. If you were to log into any video game lobby, I don't play video games, and someone were to sit there and say something stupid, they would be trolled with similar comments. That's the unfortunate reality of the internet as a whole. That's nothing to do with me. But I encourage all of my followers to, open, to engage in open discourse and be fair and honest and talk in a way which is mature. There's no need to troll anybody, male or female. Okay. Cassie, can we finish? Um, a couple of things. <clears throat> I wonder if it would be worth giving Andrew one more opportunity to um, consider whether or not he would like to apologize or um, give um, you know, an indication of how he feels about the allegations that he has negatively influenced young people in the UK. And secondly, I think we should put on record that this interview is taking place in your house because you're under house arrest. If it were not for that, then we would have chosen another location, I'm sure we would have negotiated that between. So I think that's just worth looking at. Okay. Um, so just to put on the record then, you've said that you've invited us into your house. Correct. We're here because you're under house arrest. Correct. If you were free to leave, we would have negotiated a more neutral setting. 
Don't you think, as the BBC, it would be very interesting to come here and discuss the fact that I was put in a dungeon for 92 days and then locked in house arrest without charge? Don't you think that's a far more interesting conversation than old YouTube snippets? Don't you think that would be interesting? You're here under house arrest because there's an ongoing investigation into rape and human trafficking allegations against Correct. you. Correct. I've been incarcerated without charge. And don't you think it the rape allegation has been dropped? has been incarcerated. Correct. So I am I'm, I'm incarcerated without charge, and I think that would be a far more interesting conversation than, I guess, Julian Assange is incarcerated. It's so funny. First of all, comparing yourself to Julian Assange is insane. Like, I'm the Julian Assange of misogyny. Um, it's fucking hilarious that, like, oh, dude, that's sick, man. Please tell us more about what you think you would do. Like, what you think is the best? Like, you're the editor-in-chief of the fucking BBC. Like, shut the fuck up, man. Without charge, and nobody's interested in that either. So if you actually want to do some genuine journalism and investigation, we could talk about the fact that an innocent man who has yet to be charged with a crime... Julian Massange. And I think that would be a far more interesting angle than talking about me being the most dangerous man in the world because I own the car. And this question about schools being very worried about your influence. Yeah. Boys... In he said he spends 25 a mil a year on charity. Yeah, that's a lie. Primary school or, you know, boys as young as 11 are quoting you at school, yeah. attacking girls, refusing to respect female teachers. Yeah. Would you like to say anything about that? I'd like to say a lot. First things first, as I've repeatedly said, and, I, and the only reason I keep repeat, repeating it is because I'm sure this interview will be edited. I am a positive force for the world and I teach children discipline. I teach the world discipline, male or female, of any age. And a lot of women listen to me as well. 40% of the people who listen to me are actually female. Secondly, I do understand with my massive influence, and I am now the one of the most influential people on the planet, that I do have to be slightly more oh. I say. I'm not going to disagree. Dude, like, here, the, the reason why I was talking about, like, my looks and appearance was because I briefly wanted to talk to, like, Andrew Tate dick writers in a language that they understand. The reason why I say that is because, like, he constantly talks about how fucking rich he is, how powerful he is, how massively influential he is. It's such a weird thing to regularly say how influential you are. Because an actually influential people does not have the need to say that. Okay? That's not confident. It's actually massively insecure. It's so odd that people can't recognize that. Like, you think Warren Buffett goes around saying, I'm the richest person, dude. No, of course not. Motherfucker, they know. I agree with that. The idea that I said something five years ago on a video that got 300 views. So what do you mean, being slightly more careful? I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example. Some of the jokes I made four or five years ago on a YouTube channel that got 300 views, I would no longer make it. Like I, what? Like the OnlyFans joke. The one you mentioned. Repeat. Which That's so funny. Brother, you didn't make that four or five years ago. You said that on the platform that I'm on literally last year. You said that on the platform that I'm on, on Twitch, last fucking year. You cannot walk that back and try to wash it aside. You've said it to people that I know. That's crazy. That's not what he's saying. He's making it seem like the last time he said that was make me rewind again. She said, like, okay, how about this? Are you going to suck my cock if I can show you Andrew Tate saying women are my property? Not five years ago, but actually like one year ago. Is that what you're going to do? Are going to suck my entire cock? Are you going to put it in your fucking throat like you guzzle Andrew Tate's semen? Is that what you're going to do? You fucking bitch. You dumb bitch. God damn, you're so desperate, dude. You're so pathetic if you are, are, like, arguing with someone who has literally debated this man. Like, I know what he said. I was there when he was saying these things. The OnlyFans joke, the one you mentioned, repeat, when she said, my man's car is my car, and then she said she did OnlyFans, and I said, what do you saw on OnlyFans? She said, my tits. And I said, well, those are your man's tits. As a joke, ha, 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 everybody laughed. The point, the fact... Yeah, that was just a joke. He definitely never defended how women are his property literally on this fucking platform on twitch.tv numerous times. Come on, man. That wasn't five fucking years ago and that wasn't a joke. You can't fucking walk it back now and say it was a joke in a tiny YouTube channel five years ago when you have said it 
Right now, you've said it, like, literally, you've said it on Twitch not that long ago. Before I could the do that on a podcast five years ago and only got 300 views. Now I understand I'm the most influential man on the face of the planet. I would be more careful with certain things I say. That doesn't mean the things I originally said were genuinely out to harm people. Do you really believe you're the most influential man on the face of the planet? I'm the most Google person on the planet. Do you believe you're the most influential man on the face of the planet? I'm the most Googled man on the planet. I think we're done. Not anymore, bitch. You fucking fell off. Yep. Dude, he's pitter patter. Nice to see. It was enjoyable. Nice to meet you. He really thinks he owned her. I think he's like dumb enough to think he owned her here. <laughs> no, it was fun. It was good. I enjoyed it. Demic me. I don't want to damage anything. Thank you. Very nice to meet you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Very nice to meet you. Goodbye. The very polite staff. Get your phone to go with that. Finally, you get to see Andrew's side. So guys, as we...